Hi, you're watching the Users channel and today I'm again joined by Mladen Baranek, our CTO. Thank you, Mladen. Hi. Uh, we already talked about the private and hybrid cloud and I think that it is a very important topic. And uh, comparing those two to the public cloud is, uh, uh, on one hand, it is uh, for some, it might sound like they're the same thing, but they're not. And uh, lots of companies are today faced with the decision that they have to make. Uh, and um, uh, today we will talk uh, especially about this aspect of uh, uh, how um, you, can you uh, quantify and qualify the advantages that public cloud brings as opposed to the uh, private and hybrid cloud. Can you tell us more about that, Martin? Yes, yeah, so as Adriana said, uh, last time we talked about a little bit about history today. Um, we'll emphasize mm, why public cloud is becoming the norm and why new companies uh, almost always choose to utilize uh, public cloud and uh, already established enterprises are considering uh, transition towards uh, uh, public cloud so th they will uh, migrate from on-prem to either hybrid solutions and then to public cloud or they'll try to do big bang and uh, migrate to uh, public cloud immediately so uh, public cloud brings a lot of new uh, opportunities uh, it provides a security needed uh, for a public uh, uh, for public internet so uh, it, it also provides number of uh, new uh, distribution uh, channels for uh, software licenses. Uh, th there are uh, considerable savings in software asset management, in um, uh, billing, so how you allocate uh, costs to your cost centers for, for IT services and uh, what is most important new uh, services are being developed using uh, internet technologies and uh, uh, containers services microservices architecture so uh, most of new applications are today developed with public cloud in mind and uh, the, the real challenge is what to do with uh, existing applications so uh, as i said th th there are so many benefits of using public cloud that one may ask asks uh, why would someone still use on-prem solutions so usual arguments are kind of sovereignty uh, issues so who is uh, the owner of data infrastructure and who is able to provide uh, security uh, required for certain uh, applications. So to answer that question, at, uh, uh, at this moment, uh, obviously uh, th there is a very, very limited number of uh, applications that require uh, that kind of sovereignty that someone has to install and manage uh, infrastructure and uh, IT experts to, to provide such services. So there are some uh, governments and, and corporations that are still uh, 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 having such requirements but in most cases in the US and uh, in European Union there are government uh, enabled public cloud mm -hmm. solutions and for uh, commercial enterprises for international uh, corporations there are a lot of security features and services offered in public cloud from uh, key management, uh, uh, 
So instead of using kind of obsolete uh, uh, PKI infrastructures with uh, Active Directory with uh, uh, on-prem solutions, one can actually have a uh, uh, comprehensive security solution using uh, Amazon or uh, Google for uh, key management and you, you can even have uh, hardware devices so that keys uh, for uh, accessing data and, and uh, services in public cloud are physically located with a certain number of persons mm -hmm. in an enterprise and it, it is possible to uh, even arrange a scenario where two or more persons have to assemble to uh, provide one uh, one uh, uh, key and to provide access mm -hmm. to uh, administrator account or mm -hmm. uh, things like that. So logging and uh, uh, whole infrastructure that is needed to, to support security is readily available in public cloud for the fraction of, of the cost if you try to implement such infrastructure on-prem. Mm -hmm. So basically the idea is on-prem you have a certain number of compute, network and storage resources, but the number of services and capabilities it's um, very limited and almost uh, everything you have on-prem is available in public cloud, but it doesn't make sense to use uh, such uh, solutions in public cloud. So, uh, in a lot of uh, um, cases, it can be a first step in migration to do kind of one-to-one uh, -one copy. So, usually it is possible. But then in public cloud, it is much easier to optimize costs and to leverage uh, services and new uh, technologies that are available mm -hmm. due to the scale of those uh, hypercloud mm -hmm. uh, offerings that were just not available in um, uh, on-prem environment. Mm -hmm. So basically that's it. Yeah. So uh, one very important point that uh, leads from all of that is that um, it is very important to educate yourself and to not expect uh, having things one-on-one -on -one, uh, replicated in the public cloud as you used to have them on-prem or in your private or hybrid cloud is possible, but it will not really bring you all the benefits that are out there on the public cloud. Uh, and uh, one point, um, there were several data leaks uh, in the last few years, and most of those data leaks were, in fact, due to the lack of knowledge about the public cloud. Can you tell us more about that? that there was very so, recently a, a, uh, an American bank that had a data mm -hmm. leak mm -hmm. from the public cloud. Yes, so uh, building competences and uh, understanding risk management in the era of public internet access, it's uh, qu quite challenging for uh, a lot of enterprises. So uh, cycles are much uh, faster. Mm -hmm. uh, ch uh, changes are on monthly and yearly uh, basis. And uh, what uh, most people learned and uh, what they have uh, implemented uh, in on-prem environments, it's not something that can be used in the era of uh, uh, mobile internet access and public internet requirements. So a lot of application servers, uh, a lot of uh, uh, um, uh, processes and procedures rely on the fact that you were operating inside uh, intranet protected environment where you kind of assume that uh, uh, there are no security issues with uh, third parties mm -hmm. accessing your data. Of course, that, that was wrong even before because most of security issues are anyway related to uh, uh, staff and employees mm -hmm having uh, access to uh, to data. So 
this false assumption that if something is within intranet protected with VPNs, firewalls, uh, it's more secure, usually it's quite opposite. So that, that there might be a lot of issues uh, if you migrate your existing on-prem infrastructure to public cloud and uh, suddenly you find out that you are connected to the internet and that people can uh, download enormous amount of data in a very short time and if you do not have proper uh, uh, measures, uh, policies and uh, especially uh, uh, security policies, you can expose huge uh, sets of your data to uh, general public. Yeah. So, of course, that, that's something that is uh, uh, becoming more and more of a risk. Mm -hmm. And uh, knowing how to work with subcontractors, how to work with third parties, how to manage administration, delegation of rights, becomes even more crucial than in on-prem uh, environment. Thank you. And um, we have already one video uh, covering this topic adjacently. Um, uh, why private cloud is not really cloud. Take a look at it. Uh, the link to the, this video will be um, uh, attached to um, our um, videos. And um, also there is the story about the chief electricity officer and his sad story. So. Uh, companies really used to have their own electrical plants. They no longer do that. They just buy electricity on the market and get used to that. I mean, public cloud is definitely here to say. Of course, the responsibility of the big public cloud providers becomes even greater with that because we really trust them with our data. And can you tell us more about that aspect, please? Mm -hmm. With so GDPR the, and all the yes. privacy hysteria, mm -hmm. there is lots of... So those uh, public cloud providers, uh, hypercloud guys, they, they usually have a, um, a fairly uh, straightforward uh, uh, security policy. Mm -hmm. So uh, th there is a clear line uh, between uh, customer responsibilities and uh, you know, public cloud provider responsibilities mm -hmm. for security. So basically you get uh, secure infrastructure services, but everything above that administration, your uh, uh, technical and uh, organizational uh, uh, measures, uh, how you will apply security policies, how you will main manage uh, mm -hmm. identity services, it's responsibility of the customer. And usually uh, that is the problem, so mm, there, there is almost always an issue within customer responsibility domain mm -hmm. and uh, th there were no, no uh, 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 huge uh, incidents at uh, uh, that I'm aware of that were related to hypercloud mm -hmm. uh, offerings, the, their infrastructure mm -hmm. and um, uh, services. Yeah, and when, when we are talking about the public cloud, we talk about, of course, Microsoft, Google, AWS, uh, Cisco Meraki, uh, Alibaba. Alibaba, there is as well Alibaba in China. There are also some other players, but basically we are talking about only the largest uh, uh, providers. Yes. There are many people talking about the cloud today, but in fact, there, there are not so many players in that arena. So, um, if you want to keep your money in the bank, and if you want to keep your data in the bank that is really secure, public cloud is the way to go. Would you like to share some thoughts for the end? Mm. Yeah, if you have concerns or uh, if you have ongoing projects, feel free to contact us. We'll be yeah. uh, glad to uh, work with you. Yeah, sure. We would love to. Uh, just let us know what your problem is and I'm sure we can find a way to help. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank you, Mladen, for sharing your time today again. And uh, we'll see you soon.
Bye. Bye.